We're here at Roger Williams Park at the Boathouse site, which is a permeable paver four bay with a wear and a treatment area. Today we'd like to talk about the maintenance issues concerning the inlet into this structure and the balance of the, the site. The way the water enters this site is through a drain, a trench drain that goes through a city sidewalk. Most city sidewalks that are adjacent to roadways pitch towards the roadway so that the water flows off the concrete sidewalk and into the gutter where it makes its way to catch basins. That presents a problem in and of itself because we are asking the water to come across that sidewalk pitching the opposite way. So with that, it does function, but when debris builds up in the trench drain, it stops the water from coming through. So while it, it provides access to a sidewalk and maintains the pedestrian traffic through, it does present a unique problem. So there's several different ways in which we do that. It has two bolts on top and the drain grate can be lifted off and removed so that heavy cleaning can be done. Typically what we'll do is use a plunger type um, tool that has a brush on the end and we can just push it through if the debris does not build up, um, is it really built up or clogged. So that's how we'll do it normally. And it's all about frequency with us and maintenance. If you come and visit the sites frequently, your tasks are much easier and takes a lot less time. So if we maintain it regularly, we can push the debris through with that plunger. If not, the grate needs to be lifted off and oftentimes these grates will have a particular tool that you need to use to remove the grate. It's not octagonal, it, it needs a special tool which you can get at the vendors or from the contractors who installed it. As we come through there, the water makes its way into a reinforced turf area to prevent erosion. That area can stay moderately clean if we keep the debris out of the trench drain. As it flows through that area, it comes into the permeable paver four bay installed to pro provide sediment removal, which it does. And we, again, with frequency, we can remove the first quarter inch or half an inch of debris very easily. We use a power broom, we use a bucket, and we're here for less than 15 minutes. Typically, we'll come back and broadcast the rice stone, which is in between the joints on these pavers, um, every once in a while, because that gets removed oftentimes when the sediment's removed. So, very easy to do. It's in close proximity to the roadway. So literally from the seat of their truck, our maintenance crews can see if there's sediment that needs to be removed very easily. Another instance we have here is park users will typically play with some of the stones that are up against the wear. This again is a sediment removal. It's a fail safe. So if the sediment makes its way due to its velocity past the permeable pavers and the sediment doesn't settle out there, the rip rack or river stone rock will provide a volatile situation where the sediment definitely will drop out there. Then in this particular site, it makes its way through that rip wrap, through a break in the wear, and onto the treatment area. So all of those elements need to be maintained frequently to keep this BMP operational. In heavy rain events, our overflow will be utilized to remove the water that is building up in the treatment area. In addition to having a pipe that overflows to the ponds, there is a sump in the overflow. So our workers need to go look at the sump to make sure that sediment's not building up past the elevation of the pipe and impairing the water from coming out. That overflowing would be catastrophic for the area around. Another maintenance issue here at this site is the erosion of the slopes of the BMP. So they're sloped to maintain the water inside this area, but oftentimes with heavier events, the water will make its way up on the slope and erode the area. We have used different types of uh, design techniques to resolve this. We've used reinforced turf, we used filter fabric, we used um, jute mesh, we've used um, erosion control fabric. All of those we've been reviewing their performance. Uh, with the erosion control fabric, if it's biodegradable in areas where you're going to be mowing often, that would be the best option. The longer non-biodegradable -bio could be used in areas where you don't do a lot of uh, turf maintenance. But constant reseeding is required to keep the vegetation in place and it's something we struggle with all the time.